Good evening and welcome to the DCU TV Students' Union Election Debate 2015. I'm Sean Defoe and alongside my co-host Owen Sheehan, we'll be talking to the candidates running for President of DCU Students' Union, as well as those running for Vice President of Welfare and Vice President of Education. We're going to start with the welfare race where there are six candidates, Katie Dre, Mikey Flanagan, Donal Harkin, Katie McGoey, Gillian McInerney and Kira O'Dwyer. Just some of the issues that the welfare officer has to deal with are those like accommodation, STIs and of course mental health. The woman who was dealing them with them this year was Eve Curtin and she spoke to Mark Kelly earlier. So the student union welfare officer role is quite a large role in that it encompasses kind of a little bit of everything. So you're there for students on all issues from mental health, sexual health, pregnancy, eating disorders, when you're worried about your friend, worried about classwork, problems with the lecturer. Um, so myself and Gary would have quite a bit of a crossover, so myself and the education officer. So it really is a vast role. Um, there's lots involved including committees such as appeals committee, students union executive, governing authority and loads more. Um, they're, they're probably one of the most tedious parts of the job but it's also really interesting to see how the university actually works and where the money goes and how we actually have a say as well and we are respected by what we consider like our elders at DCU. Um, another part of the job is campaigns so I absolutely love that part of the job. Um, so our like, mental wellbeing week and shag week and diversity week. Um, that's where your ideas come into play so that would be my favourite part of the job because you get to be creative, you get to try out new things um, it's really really the exciting part of the job um, the most difficult part of the job I'd say would be the casework so that is the student issues so um, it is quite a difficult job in that it's people's, like your people's lives really are kind of not at risk but they're in, in your hand and it's up to you to make sure that they get the best advice possible um, from whether it's the student support and development, the counselling service, whether it's stuff to do with student assistance fund. So you just need to be informed a little about a lot. You don't need to be a genius, you don't need to have full information on sexual health, you just need to be able to point them in the right direction. Um, so to be informed and be willing to learn is a big part of the job. So every day is different here, so in the morning I come in and I check my emails and there's generally maybe about five or six to do with student issues, so whether they're having problems with money or they'd like to arrange a meeting regarding some issue that's affecting their mental health or relationship problems. Um, around 10 to 12 people come into my office every week with those issues, um, so I try my best to help them. Some people come back in a couple of weeks time let me know how they're getting on, um, but mostly about 80% of people just need someone to listen to. Um, someone to offer them advice and it's just once off and they're there to happy you're happy and they go off about, about their business so starting off the show tonight we'll be hearing from the welfare candidates there are six of them and they're joining me in studio now starting with you Katie why are you running this year um well I've decided to run for welfare officer this year because I've had the best last two years of my life have been the best two years um, they um, I've really grown as a person and I feel like I want to give something back to the university and to the student union. They've helped me so much over the last three years. Um, I I know that not every student is the same, but I'd like to give, I'd like to help replicate the experience that I've had in DCU with two other students and to make them feel like they belong as one big community in DCU. Okay, Katie Dre, thank you very much. Mikey Fanagan, you're also running. Why? Yeah, I'm running because um, the last three years I've had an unbelievable time, and the fact that as people, I've always had people coming up to me and asking, "What is my?" plan in the future and w w that got me thinking and they, they kept on pressuring me to ask them are you going to run for anything in the student union then it broke down to are you going to run for welfare so the fact is if people are already asking me why aren't you going to run for it I, I, I took it on myself to say yeah I'm, I, 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 I should be the right candidate and that's why I'm here today and um, also because I've got some really cool ideas and I also want to bring them concepts to every student in DCU and to make it a happy place. Okay, thank you. Uh, Donald Harkin you also think that you should be the one elected why? <laughs> I'm very passionate about youth representation. Uh, since I was young, I was in youth council as head boy, and I'm also president of the Spotlight Day Action Panel. I'm just really passionate about giving young people advice. I've worked on so many issues affecting young people today, and I really think I can make a change and help improve the lives of DC students. And I just really love a chance to be given that. Okay, the second Katie running, then Katie McGoey, uh, why should you be vice president for welfare? Um, I'm not ready to leave DC yet, yet. I've had a fantastic three years here, and I'm ready to give back. I know I can improve student life for students here. Um, college is a different experience for everyone. Um, it can affect people mentally, physically and sexually. And it's a place to learn and 
I love college. Janine <laughs> 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 uh, McInerney, do you love college as well? And why are you running? I do love college. I love college quite a bit. Uh, I'm 25 and I've been in college since I left school. I have quite a bit of experience that I feel I can bring to the role of welfare. Um, I have a huge amount of experience in casework. I'm a trained youth and community worker. So that's very much dealing one on one with people. I've been running campaigns all year as chairperson of LGBTA. Um, and I sit on several committees, um, some national. So I feel that if I were to get the job, I could hit the ground running and give the absolute most to the job. Okay. And then last but not least, Kira O'Dwyer. Yeah, I suppose uh, the main reason I'm running is since I started in DCU, um, I had a lot of difficulties myself settling in in first year and the SU were the people who were there as a support for me and I was always so grateful for that. I want to give back to not only the SU but be there as a pillar of support for all the students in DCU. Um, I think having those difficult times in first year has made me grow so much more and learn so much more about other people and that's why I really want to give back and be there as a support for them. Okay. Uh, one of the big, big issues that students have been having the last few years, and indeed people in general, especially in Dublin, has been housing and the lack of it, the lack of accommodation for students. And Karen, I'm going to start with you uh, because you mentioned your manifesto, you want to see an online uh, portal for, for housing access. Or, uh, how would that work? Yeah, that's right. Um, at the moment, when you click into the accommodation link on the student unit page, it brings you into another page where there's just further links. So I want to cut out them links and have it as just all the houses that are uh, currently available that the landlords have said that they are fully available and willing to take on students so it cuts out all those extra links and is just straight away these are the houses that are available to you. Mm. And what about the cost for students because I mean it's something that even the government hasn't been able to fix if there are people becoming homeless every single week and um, like how, how can uh, you help as a welfare candidate for that? That's No that's very true and a lot of people have come to me saying the accommodation is rising every single year is there anything you think you'll be able to do? Uh, realistically I think it will be very difficult but it's definitely something I'm looking into and I'm currently looking into it with a few landlords around the area to see if there's a possibility of at least bringing the housing prices down. I don't believe the student accommodation will be as easy to do but definitely with the housing I think there more, there's more of a chance there. Don't know, is that something you think can be done? I think so, like I think you know the private accommodations, I live in Shannon for example myself, they're getting very expensive and that's something that will be very hard to tackle but I think you know as Keir said about housing you know and a lot of houses around here, a lot of people looking to get students in, you know, they make money from whatever. I think if they knew they get students in on a regular basis and it was affordable for students and they'd love their continuous, I think that's something you could definitely look into. Right, would you agree Katie? Yeah, I think um, it is a very difficult um, thing to bring in for DC students and especially with housing prices. I'm, I commute so I don't have as much of a, like, I don't have to deal with it but I know my friends and stuff, they, they do find it like it's very expensive to live in <coughs> DC or around DCU. I think if you were to work with landlords around the area and they knew, like Donald said, that there was a continuous amount of students coming in and that they, they would look after the houses and that they would be there, that that would make them want to take on students more. Of course, it's those who argue that saying you haven't lived outside of home, you haven't had to look at so, how are you going to understand uh, the issues of students yeah. who have? So I definitely, um, if I was to become a welfare officer, I'd have to definitely um, look into it a lot more and work with students who are living in student accommodation <coughs> and who have um who have problems paying for it obviously it's uh, like i have the luxury of living at home so i don't have to pay rent and that's something that like a lot of students have and it's very hard to deal with and the money is an issue and we would have to look at it and maybe as the university try and help with it because there is obviously issues um, and it shouldn't be an issue just because you're from the country that you can't come to university. Mm -hmm. Money is of course a big issue for, for students at the moment and so is, is healthy eating. It's something that a number of you talked about at Hostings. And Katie, you wanted to introduce, um, if, if you were elected, healthy eating on a budget, so something that will be relevant to students. Tell us a bit about that. Um, I plan on having like, workshops throughout first semester in particular, for, especially for fresh years. Starting an orientation week and teaching them where to shop around the area of DCU and how to cook and how to help the eat in a budget. Yeah, is that not something that kind of Eve has done quite a lot this year, particularly where you can order your veg and, and get it in? So how would you build on that? Well, it's more independent for students to learn themselves rather than dependent on Eve. And yeah. Okay, uh, Mikey, something else that you're, you're also very yeah, passionate about. Yeah, it's quite an interesting uh, I think that on my manifesto is um, the idea is to have vending machines, food vending machines. So I got the idea from when I was walking through the ILAC Centre one day, and in one of the kind of the bars they have burger vending machines, so they keep them hot. So I, I kind of thought to myself, if I was to run for a position, and uh, if I'm running for welfare, I think to have food vending machines would be something that could work. They're efficient. 
and it, like it'll prove healthy if if you if, if you're beside a vending machine with Kit Kats and there's apples and bananas. Surely there are, there are people who are going to go. Oh, I can go for them instead of having to walk to the shop. If there's one in each building, engineering, science, instead of what have to walk to the shop, they can just walk down the stairs, have a banana, have a water, have a time it, and go back and study. Mm. Is that also that's quite expensive though? Because the reason fruit isn't in vending machines is because it goes off. It's not. Well, like it, it, it does go right. off, but if, if 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 it's worked with a good campaign, a solid a solid team around it, if everyone gets on board, it, there is no reason that it couldn't. It, it shouldn't fail. And what kind of a team is going to stop fruit going off? How would they do that? Well, not a team, but if, if there are people who are marketing it right. Um, if because it is healthy eating at the end of the day, and that's what we're trying to bring into DCU. It already is here with the fruit and veg with Eve, but there, there is there is there is a plan there, and it, it, it should should carry through. Right, so we'll be part of a bigger campaign rather than just. Well, this well, 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 no, I mean if it, it, it's it start off in September, and we, we we can obviously do it on trial basis first, see how it goes, and I'm pretty sure it will be a good good success. And it could not only just be DCU, but this could go all around universities, all around schools, because it's such a big deal in secondary schools within the healthy eating. And if we can get, if we can start off, we could be the top. We could DCU could be the person, the, the college that starts with free vending machines. This could go all around Ireland. Mm. Okay, the the big issue that I think the, the SU would have with that is the cost of it. And uh, uh, you, how would you deal with that on a cost-effective basis? Well, you're not going to have a massive amount of money maybe to spend on vending machines or on a big, a big campaign, for example. Yeah, well, my manifesto um, and myself, I'm all about little things. Um, an idea that was, was brought up in one of the questions that was given at Hustings the other day was that we can um, we start a conversation with the restaurant managers and at the tills, instead of having muffins and chocolate, we could have fruit, which is something that they offer already. It's just about product placement. It's moving things. I know myself, when I go in, I will grab some fruit if I see it. But if there's a huge uh, queue around the salad bar, I'm not going to try and jostle through people to get my banana. If it's by the, if it's by the till, I will absolutely pick it up. Um, something for healthy eating for students living in accommodation and living away from home would be chat to your mates. I have a friend who regularly buys a big bag of potatoes with a friend of hers. They put their money together, they get more for their money's worth and they take turns cooking and things like that which will work very well if you have friends, if you're living with friends and that kind of thing. So those would be my kind of ideas that I would bring to the table. Right, well what if a restaurant manager then came to you and said, well Kit Kats, Mars Bars, they sell apples and bananas aren't sexy, they're not going to sell, they're not going to make me money. <laughs> I think it's in their it, I think it's in their interest to help students out. I know the manager of the main restaurant and he is a very, very open guy, um, really, really open to lots of different suggestions and things like that. I think we can see a wide variety of things in the canteen already. There's from the different um sections where you can buy hot food to the salad bar to paninis and rolls and all that kind of thing. I think it's just about moving it slightly, moving it around, and I think it's something that could be negotiated. Okay, something that's on your campaign poster, Jibby, is to promote better and safer sex. How are you going to make sex better for students? <laughs> <laughs> it's about opening this conversation. Shag Week, since I have arrived here, has, all, has been completely about STIs and condoms. And I know about that stuff, and I know the majority of students know about that stuff. It's not just saying, this is what an STI looks like, and here's how to prevent it. It's also about opening up that conversation around consent, around communicating what you want, and about talking about what exactly you want from sex, talking about it openly and honestly, and having that conversation with students, because I think it's still a very taboo thing. People do laugh and do giggle about it, but it's a very serious thing at the end of the day. Do you agree, Don? Do we need to talk more about sex? Um, I think yes, what Jelaine said is definitely correct. Um, I think though there still should be a serious focus on STIs. I think, you know, a lot of, we know a lot of cases of STIs, you know, they don't appear straight away and then we cure cases of people get really sick because they don't know months later. So that's why I want to bring in free STI tests in every few months. I think it's something that's really, really important. I think, you know, it's something we can't overlook and I think, you know, it's just so important for students, like, and the fun it has to be put there. Like, I think other things pale in comparison to how important that it surely is. Okay. Finally, we're running out of time in this debate. I'm going to go to all of you, and uh, in one word, what is the most important issue you would face as the welfare candidate? We'll start at the far side of the table. Kira, one uh, word, what's the most important? Definitely mental health. Mental health. Gillian? Small things. Mental health. Doctor's fees. Mental health. Uh, mental health. OK, thank you to the welfare candidates, Katie Dre and Mikey Flanagan, Donald Harkin, Katie McGoey, Gillian McInerney and Kira O'Dwyer. That's it for the welfare race. We head over to Owen now. Thanks, Sean. Yes, the SU position for Vice President of Education is one that always throws up a number of questions for our candidates. Should we be electing somebody who, through their involvement with the Students' Union exec, can directly impact on our student life? Or should we be electing somebody who can collaborate with our academic staff? 
The person who's been dealing with questions like this all year is our current Vice President for Education, Gary Gillick. The Education Officer is basically the student representative uh, well, on the executive that does exactly what it says in the tin. We deal, I deal with anything that's to do with um, education. In other colleges they call it the uh, Vice President of Academic Affairs and Quality Assurance and that sort of defines the role more so. But basically it's just anything that's to do with education or educational policy. Day to day tasks is a, it's a hard thing to answer because every single day is completely different. Like so, I mean, obviously it's going to change as well uh, around exam time. You're going to have a lot of things about exam results, so different things fall under that, with like compensation, appeals, postponement of assessments, all those sort of things. Um, other days, then you could be working on quality assurance, which is essentially student feedback to improve the student experience in the university. Um, I just every single day is is going to be something completely different, and then you're dealing with general student queries as well, like transfer queries. Sometimes it leads into finances, sometimes it leads into registration. Um, anything that's going to be related back to your academics. In an education officer, I mean the same thing you'd look for in any sort of sabbatical, in that they need to be organised for this for the education one in particular because they sit on the most committees. So you have to be organised with your notes, with reading all the sort of papers before you go in, knowing you're going to sort of answer things. Not that you're questioned, but you know you have to be really, really organised in that. You have to be sort of confident as well when you're sitting in these sort of committee meetings with these new people and lecturers. So you, know, you have to be well able to just be there and speak your voice. Um, as well as that, then you'd have to be organised, confident. Um, uh, uh, what else did I say? <laughs> <laughs> you have to be organised, confident. Uh, you have to be willing to engage. That's it with um, sort of students and any sort of projects you're taking on. Like students are going to be coming into you every single day, and you have to be extremely approachable. And I know that they're generic terms for every single sabbatical, but um, it's, it's really is true of this one for different reasons. You're very welcome along to the DCU TV live debate for the SU position of Vice President for Education. The four candidates going for the position this year are Jake Ryan, James Donahue, Jack Butterley, and Irla Carty. We'll begin with each candidate giving themselves 30 seconds to tell us why they are running for this position. We'll begin with Jake Ryan. Um, I'm running for this position because I love DCU. I've had the best possible experience I could have hoped for and I want every student to have an experience like that. That's why I'm running because it's all about your experience. That's what my campaign is about. Hi, hi. I'm running this year. I served as a current business convener this year and I believe I have the right ideas to take the union forward in and achieve achievable goals that will improve the education experience as well as student life here on campus. How are you going? I'm James Donahue. Uh, I love DCU. I love waking up in the morning and it's it's brilliant crack. But at the same time, from my experiences here, I've learned that working with people is the way I want to go. And I'd love to have the chance to work with the people through this role as education officer. Yeah, I'm Mary Carty. Um, to be honest, you know, my, my years in DCU have been amazing. Um, I've learned a lot throughout the years. I am actually a repeat student and I want to use my experience and what I've learned throughout my years to help other students and give, give them information so they can succeed and uh, just be there for the students, be there for support. Okay, so we'll begin by going through a couple of your manifestos and obviously you've had the opportunity to chat at Hustings and be asked a couple of questions yesterday. Uh, but we'll begin with yourself, uh, James, because as part of education officer, obviously a critical part of anybody's education is their exams. And one of the very interesting points on your manifesto is regarding the Christmas exams and you plan on making them a little less stressful for students and how do you plan on doing this? Yeah, obviously being someone who gets stressed and I've had a couple of bad experiences with Red Bull, to be honest with you, I think that... We get study skills provided, but they're not exactly catered towards that six break week break which we have. So maybe study skills specific to the DCU break and specific to college exams, because a lot of people in my course anyway don't actually know how to study for college exams, because it's different to some people are still thinking of how many SRPs you need and stuff like that. But uh, then on top of that, I want to work with the welfare officer to run events to promote better mental health during exams and healthy breakfast mornings and stuff like that, just so it's a little less spread, uh, um, stress and a little more just we're prepared for this we're going to go through it and we'll be grand the other side. Jack you're a student who would have had a full complement of January exams this year uh, it's been something that I guess in the conversation of the regular DCU student is often referred to as unfair that people are studying during their Christmas breaks has this ever entered your mind at all over the past couple of weeks that perhaps DCU could look to change the date of the exams and push them before Christmas? It all comes down to real preference, really. I know some students are, um, would have been delighted at the same time to have the Christmas period to study, and I do know others who feel that the Christmas period was kind of interrupted and ruined by it. 
it really comes down to personal preference there. Surely, if there's demand, of course, to get it changed, those are things that can be explored. But at the same time, that's all just speculation right now. Genuinely, like, I'm my own opinion, I have my own opinion, but I'm sure everyone has their own opinions too on which would be a better structure. Um, I had six exams there in January. It was an awful lot of work on top of my commitments outside of the lecture hall. So I do know, I do know, the, I do know how tough exams can be. But it's the main thing is just making sure that you're well prepared for them and making sure that the office is a good support system for anyone who has exams as well as anyone who, you know, somewhere you can go if exams aren't going too well or anywhere like that. And something obviously during that study period is the whole issue of study spaces, which is something that you mentioned uh, yesterday, Irla, and indeed in, in your manifesto. Uh, you said that you want to, um, I'll actually read you out a quote from your manifesto just for the audience. You said the lack of computers, laptops, PowerPoints, by PowerPoints I presume you mean projectors, and private student rooms in the library and around campus has always been an issue, and I want to combat this once and for all. However, your solution is that students can simply book a Henry Grattan classroom. How does that uh, challenge, the, like once and for all, the lack of computers, laptops, and projectors? Yeah, well, just uh, when I, uh, the PowerPoints, as in um, plug sockets and that, that's what I meant by that. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. So yeah. I think there is a lack of uh, PowerPoints where you can plug in your laptop okay. and not charge them because you don't want a dead battery going to do an assignment. Um, to uh, to what, what, I, what I was suggesting, as in, like, if you could go and uh, book a classroom, which you can, actually, but there isn't enough awareness, which I believe, um, you go into a classroom, you can spend you can spend your day there with a group work or something, You're not not necessarily doing uh, using a laptop or something, but you have that study space. And uh, just to make it more fr uh, friendly, uh, just so you c when you're in college for a long day, you don't want to be drained or anything, so you can go around. The classrooms need to be more welcome, more uh, chilled out. Sure, because obviously those rooms are available to societies at the moment, but not to just people who want to do study. But again, the lack of computers, laptops, PowerPoints, that, how, how are you going to do that? Booking your room doesn't just provide you with a, with a computer or a laptop. Yeah, obviously that's the point. Um, hopefully we could uh, get, on, uh, get on, work with the president. Uh, we can provide more laptops and computers okay. and get them into the college. Through ISS, is it? Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Um, We'll, we'll leave that there because I want to move on to class rep meetings because that was obviously something that in the Albury yesterday was, was talked about uh, at length. Uh, Jake, do you have much experience in CRC when it comes to like monitoring the, the attendance of class reps and stuff like that? No, I've never actually been in CRC myself, but um, I think that the system works really well at the moment. I think that it, the problem is with a democracy, anyone can get elected, and the thing is, it might not always be the right person for the job, but generally class reps want it for the right reasons, and I think the system works well. I haven't actually been in it, but I have knowledge in how it works, and also, if I were to be elected, I'd get the full training over the summer. Okay, uh, so you'd be bringing in students to DCU over the summer? Sorry? The, like training for class reps over the summer, is it? No, no, I think that the training is fine. I just think that, obviously, sometimes some class reps are less engaged, so mm -hmm. that's why maybe the convener's role needs to be increased. Maybe office hours, maybe fortnightly office hours, where you have one hour where you can go to the convener if your class rep is a bit disengaged or not go into your issues that you've somewhere else you can go to. Mm. You're a convener this year, Jack. Uh, yes. Would you agree with that? Um, basically, I do believe the class rep system is working incredibly well. We have over 300 class reps this year. The best thing to do really about the class reps is to, obviously the training Gary has provided this year has been incredibly beneficial. I've seen the results. It's such a big difference from last year to this year. Just the amount of engagement and, you know, you know, debate going on in class rep council every fortnight. The big thing I'd like to push for is to make sure class reps, effectively the SU campaigns, you know, everything from mental health week to shag week, they kind of can be seemed a bit limited to the hub base. But there's no reason with such a great, you know, vast amount of class reps that they can't be actually featured in every building of each faculty. The four faculties should be well represented in that case. You know, there should be class reps out there. Like the big thing I would be pushing for is for the conveners to be responsible for bringing those campaigns to their individual buildings. So like, so and would the class reps actually carry that out in the buildings? Yes, of course. But it's not exactly part of their remit to, ca to carry forth the SU policies there. It's more to be like the conduit of information oh, between of yourselves and the, con and the exec and their class themselves, isn't it? Of course, but the best thing to do is a lot of class reps are always looking for more experience to get involved in like the SU policies and the SU campaigns. It's something you do, you're interested in it as a point to that. As well as that though, the class reps would be responsible for applying information. Basically, I've been encouraging all my class reps this year to just be doing like little bullet points from, um, you know, like from CRC, just be like, okay, so we talked about, you know, possible repeat fee rises, you know, let your class know that we, you know, put a motion against this, you know, to start debate about changing that. Little things like that, just keeping the spread of information. That's the main thing about class reps. They're the feet on the ground, they're the people to make sure that anything that does happen at exec, convener, and obviously class of council, that the general student body is informed in each class, and that's the best way to keep pushing it. Okay. Right?
Uh, Ir Irla, you mentioned uh, that you want to improve the social side of, of CRC. There, there were weekends away organized this year. Would you continue to, to do them again next year and more? Yeah, I think that is very important because um, from my experience, especially working with uh, class reps, that it, sometimes it does feel uh, hard to engage because maybe you don't want to be bothered because they do have their own college work to be doing as well. But if they get trained in a more social, informal aspect, then they can be more approachable, and that's what I want. That's what I want to make the ECU a nice, friendly environment where people just can be friends and interact better. That's good. That actually brings me nicely on to, to my next point, which is about the SU being approachable. It's something that comes up every single year in yep. these debates. And James, uh, you said exactly that. You want to make the SU more approachable. And Neil, you've spoken about this as well. You said you want an SU for everyone. Yep. Uh, so we'll start with you, I guess. So we'll get to you in just a second, James. But Neil, you said you're going to make the SU a union for all, let's not forget, it's 15,000 students next year across two campuses. Yep. How are you going to do this? Just to give more information, because... Uh, from my time in DCU, maybe first, second year, to be honest, I don't think I even knew what SU stood for. Okay. And a lot of students, from talking to students the last week, the last doing the campaign, a lot of students don't even know the SU is here. And they feel daunting, yeah. uh, daunted going up into the SU because they don't really know people up there or they don't know a friend up there might help them out. But I want to give information there so people know that they can come up and they can approach us. So like how, how is this information going to be given out? Uh, true. I'm not sure yet. Hopefully, work with the welfare officers or okay. work with the president of the SU. Um, just because every every first year student obviously gets a flyer about the SU every yeah. every year. They get emails constantly about it. So, do you feel that that's not good enough at the moment? Um, well, it, it kind of goes to show that it's not good enough at the moment because a lot of people are they don't have the knowledge of it. So, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to take what is implemented now and work on that and improve it. And I will. I, I would like to constantly get feedback from the students. So they can uh, they can tell me what's happening, or they can tell whoever is elected what's happening and how they feel on the situation. James, why why isn't the SU's approachability up to your standards? I, I assume it's not up to your standards because you said you wanted to make it more approachable. Um, yeah, well, in fairness, everyone up in the SU is very approachable. I got to know them very well this year, and that's that's a brilliant thing. And I think talking to all the lads running this year, everyone's very approachable as well. But sometimes it can be a little daunting, and some people just. They don't, they don't even think of going up to it. Or a friend of mine actually went up looking for condoms one day, but he went to the careers office as well. <laughs> so stu like stuff like that, it's just knowing where it is. And uh, I said, um, maybe a few simple things to maybe get an extra couple of groups up there. Like um, I said, healthy breakfast mornings. And I want to include other faculties more. I want to put TVs like the ones in the library in the, the science building. So there is SU notices and there's careers notices as well. Just small little things to make people m feel more included. Obviously, uh, I've been kind of with the GA club uh, myself now and I've been in uh, events for RAG and uh, Cancer Sock, two brilliant societies. So I'd like to branch out and maybe go to a different society nights as well to get mo to know more people as well mm. and get more involved in things. But the SU, the exec in fairness, have been very involved with yeah, those kind of things. They have in fairness and just a few simple things like the healthy breakfast mornings and stuff. I'm not saying I'm going to change the world and everyone's going to be up in my office every day of the week, but just a few simple things try to be as approachable as I can because in fairness if it wasn't for this year's SU and getting to know them I probably wouldn't be sitting here going for this so I'd like everyone else to feel the same that they can go up to the SU and have a chat. Uh, Jack you were on the exec this year, um, if people attack you and say we need to make it more approachable what's your response? Um, I wouldn't, I genuinely do think the SU is incredibly approachable, they have a great relationship with clubs and societies, they have a great relationship with general students, they have a great relationship with staff as well and we're very very lucky at this university. Um, the big thing though is about making um, the SU more approachable is what I said earlier on to you, making sure class reps are well trained, making sure class reps are well equipped on the ground level in each of their individual classes, make sure that every bit of information that's coming out of the exec okay. and classroom council is being passed on, making sure that all campaigns, people feel included, people feel engaged with them, that people just feel like this SU is for everyone because it is, it is working towards everyone. And with even just building on the improvements we've made this year, it genuinely can be for everyone and everyone can feel included. Jake, uh, I want to bring you up really quickly on something you said in Hustings yesterday, and it's a very interesting point about the Irish accommodation setup. Yes. 
Uh, explain more to me exactly what's this going to involve and wh where is it going to be? Well, this actually was brought to me from uh, DCU coming away like because I have very limited knowledge in that area, to be honest. I've always had an appreciation for it because it's been a thing in my family, but I've just never really got a grasp for it. But um, yeah, so an Irish language accommodation because there's been a lot of talk and steps taken when it comes to the Irish language and there's events and there's Kayleys and things. And that's great and it's great especially for international students. But for students here in Ireland who want to speak the language, the best way to do it is to have Irish language speaking accommodation because it's a big step and it shows that DCU is making a huge effort to do so. Other colleges have it and it's about time DCU had it. Where, where is it going to be? Well, I think really what could happen is you could have some of Hampstead or you could have some of College Park changed over to Irish. How people. many rooms? Um, well, maybe a floor even. Okay, so because I don't speak Irish, I've suddenly got less of a chance to get into on-campus accommodation. Yeah, well, it's the same as if you don't get over 500. You've There's 550 points. points from this year. Oh, okay. But yeah, I still don't think that's fair. Um, there's no reason why I had to live in Gateway because I got 450. Yeah. And that was an awful long way away every day. Um, so I don't think that's a fair system either. And I think there's things like that wrong with accommodation. Accommodation needs to be changed. But I think, back to the Irish language, I think that you could do a whole floor because there's no reason why Irish language speaking students shouldn't have a whole floor. Okay. Um, I, I want to finish up uh, with this, um, uh, and I, I think we'll stick on this point because it is something that's been very, very, I suppose, much talked about yesterday, especially, and, and the year that you were, uh, it was put to you as well, I think, a couple of times about the Irish language. Uh, how important would, would this accommodation be if it, if it was being introduced? Yeah, that would, uh, it would be very important. It brings a new aspect of college life. Um, there is a lot of people out there who speak Irish, and it is a prominent uh, feature in today's society. And... Really what's happening is, with the shock in the gale the, and uh, the different uh, social events that's happening, they are good, but uh, look, at everything can be improved. And we, we just have to listen to the people and give them what they want and support them no matter what they want. And if I was to be elected, then I would definitely work closely with the welfare officer to uh, provide the information that students need around what they can do to promote Irish language and to uh, really increase social uh, events through Irish because I think within the university it's not all academically you learn so much socially that you can bring throughout your whole life and with these social events and especially with an Irish we, we can make it happen like. Okay, uh, Irla Carty, James Donoghue, Jack Butterley and Jake Ryan, thank you very much for joining us in studio here today. That's where we leave uh, the debate for the Vice President for Education role now and it's over to you Sean. Thanks Owen. We turn now to the presidential race. The president of the Student Union represents DCU students on a national level. The man who held that role this year was Kenneth Brown and Mark Kelly spoke to him earlier. Student Union president is the chief representative for every student uh, in DCU. So we've over 12,000 students here. Um, we have elections every March. Obviously we're in the middle of them right now. That's what you're doing this for. But anyone can run for it. Um, there's no restrictions from first to final year. Um, obviously the longer you've been here the more of, of a of a grounding or a base you're going to build up so first years first years don't really run for that much um, but essentially you're, you're the chief representative you're the chief spokesperson any of the big issues all the responsibility would fall on your shoulders but uh, there's a lot of fun with it as well yeah the job entails so the the, the number one thing with it would be representation um, I would sit on I think close to 20 different committees across the university uh, which is fairly mental and uh, now they're not all they're not all weekly things some of them could be fortnightly some maybe once a month or once every six weeks but you're we we have a really good working relationship here with the university and um, so they've we have seats on everything we've we've a student's voice and everything and myself Gary and Eve share those out but I, I would I would sit on a lot of them and I, your main, main thing would be the the main voice of students here on campus and um, aside with that uh, we look after the budget so I'd be I'd, I'd be resp responsible for those that have to sign off on anything that goes, any events, anything that's going ahead basically. It's different departments or different places might be running here, we might be planning it ourselves, but if it's coming out of the Students' Union um, pocket, I'd have to approve those things as well. Um, no, I think the main thing, and it's kind of the buzzword around elections every year, is just someone who's approachable, but I think you, you can never really go past that. If you, if you have someone who's a, a president but you don't feel comfortable talking to them, then are they really much use to you? So I think someone who's just r really friendly, really in touch with the students, there's someone you can see walking around and they're no different to you because you might have been in class with them, you might have elected them, but someone that everyone feels comfortable talking to. Um, but also someone I think who's very, very good at building working relationships um, here in D like we know, we know everyone across the different unions in the country, and I think we we easily say, maybe we're, maybe we're boasting, but we've one of the best working relationships with the university. So I think, you know, being, being able to positively work with staff and 
we're all striving for a better better experience here for students in DCU. So someone who probably isn't as isn't as you know headstrong or looking to go in and fight the power, but just so work with them. Welcome back to the DCU TV Students Union election debate. I'm joined now in the studio by the candidates for the president's race. There are four people running, however, only three are here tonight. Uh, Timmy Crow is absent as he's representing Ireland in athletics in Prague this week. However, you can check out his manifesto at Timmy for Prez on Facebook or on his website, 11student.com. Um, so I'm joined by the three candidates who are here. That's Sean Cassidy, Terry Keegan and Kim Sweeney. Uh, guys, I'll start uh, by asking you, you know, why do you feel, Terry, we'll start with you, uh, that you should be elected SU president? Uh, basically, I came into the college uh, three years ago and I got heavily involved. I set up the SU Boxing Club, got heavily involved in the Club Life Committee. Uh, this year I sit on the Office of Student Life. Um, I'm also on the New Bar Committee and the Hub Development Committee. So from that, I've, I've, I've been heavily involved with a lot of people um, setting up things, helping people with the Club Life Committee, setting up other clubs. So. Uh, Basically, I just think that I'm, I'm a pretty good people person and I think I'd bring a good uh, sort of maturity to the role because I'm a mature student myself. Okay, Sean Cassidy, why should people vote for you? Um, I suppose because I represent something different. Uh, year on year we see the same election and more often than not it's a popularity contest and we don't see enough about policy and about p political implications of what the candidates represent. Uh, I'm running on simple policies, things that are very achievable, uh, but I also represent uh, activism. Uh, I've been an activist within the union for two to four years, depending on your point of view. Uh, and again, through my uh, policies put forward at council, I've made a uh, long-term change. So again, if you look at the temporary ID form that students can access if they've lost their student card during an exam, that's something that I, I, I proposed last year, and that's benefits students as of this year. Uh, so it's these type of areas where you know you look across the university, you see fines, you see things not getting done, you see students not being properly represented, and I think you know part of it is that students aren't informed about you know what type of representatives they deserve. Uh, and when you give them the information, I've been talking to a lot of students this week, and when you give them the information, you can really see their eyes explode. So when you talk about you know the the the, the, the amount of net profit likes of campus res is making you know you literally just see their eyes pop uh, and you know that's really what, what I'm running on I'm running to try and engage students try and inform them and try to show them that I'm the best candidate okay and Kim Sweeney why are you running for president well I spent four years representing both uh, my class and my faculty and I think that it's time now that I can represent the whole student body and um, I've been highly I've been really involved I uh, really enjoyed my four years here but I think that I need, ha I need another year to give back to DCU because uh, I appreciate everything it's done for me. Mm. Um, I don't want to, I'm approachable, I'm um, hard working, everyone that knows me knows that I give 100% to everything that I do and I really want to take on the challenge of being president. You mentioned the entire student body there, the current SU president Kenneth Brown said that the hardest thing he found about this year was that you never will never please everybody, that no matter how good you do, uh, how many things you bring in, there's always going to be someone in your ear complaining about something else. How, how would you deal with that? Do you think that would get to you? Um, no, because uh, like because I have been representing, for example, the science ball I was organising this year. I was trying to get the nur all of the nurses could get involved, but because some of them are on placement, um, not all of them could come. But I made I did a survey to see which dates would suit most of them. So I think just trying to get most of the student body, uh, you're never going to please everyone. But I think that if you try to please most of them and the highest percentage, then it, that's the best way to go about it. Yeah, is that something you agree with, Sean? Um, to a certain extent, you know, the reality is, is that you have, you know, 12 to 13,000 students coming from varying, various different backgrounds, various di different demographics. You have postgrads, undergrads, uh, and the reality is, is that everyone has different types of issues. You know, it's not that you're going to please everyone, it's that you want to represent them on their specific issues. So again, for postgrad, postgrads, I've mentioned this before, the need for a GSU is, is long overdue. Other unions have it, we don't, and, you know, the, has the question has to be asked, why, even though we've discussed this for two years? Uh, when you look at undergrad issues, look at nurses, for example. You know, they're still not paid the minimum wage. Uh, but is that something that you can influence as the SU uh, I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it and I'm looking, you know, you actually have to, that's, that's national, that's a national issue. That's what you, where you have to build solidarity with other unions like UCD, like Trinity, uh, like NUIG and like UCC, where nurses are, and try and build movement. So, like, for example, you know, I, I believe that there is power in a union. Uh, and if you look at yesterday, uh, the INMO, uh, supported by the USI, I think it's the PSA, uh, I might be wrong, that's the, the Psych Nurses Union, uh, they got together uh, over the last couple of months to try and fight against what had happened with the Nurses Board of Ireland. They introduced a 50% increase, a 50 euro increase on the annual retention, which all nurses have to pay. Uh, and as of yesterday, that was deferred. So unions do work. When you get together, 
uh, when you put some effort in, when you're strategic, when you lobby properly, you do make change. Like I'm looking at the nurses' minimum wage campaign, and the difference between paying them minimum wage, what they're paid now, and actually paying them uh, just the minimum wage, which they should be paid more. But again, we're going we're gonna to be trying to be realistic. Is three million, a year, three million a year, and in the grand scale of the, the health budget, that's not a lot to 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 show our nurses that you know uh, we, we value them, and also that you know they, they get equal pay for equal work. Well, in a health budget that people are cutting back, it, it can actually be quite a lot of money, and it is something that type of lobbying is something that takes a lot of time. Uh, Terry, do you think that? In, especially because it's only a one-year reign, that there's a lot that you could do uh, while trying to battle the red tape of a position like the president. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, there is, uh, there's a lot that can be done. I, I don't know if I'd 100% agree in thinking that the DCU president would be a kind of uh, political entity entirely. I think that you're kind of there more to facilitate, um, run events, sit and do sit on committees. You know, you're running as a non-voting exec. Um, you hope you're there to be the chair of committees and try and make change through uh, what the student body wants you know and mm. um, I've been sitting on the CLC for the last two years chair this year we had to make changes to policy that people didn't particularly like you know we brought in the pay, pay for coaching uh, to be you know done through uh, paying through the books and stuff like that and through tax and uh, it's not been overly uh, popular by a lot of uh, clubs but they had to take it and you know for for change and for things to move forward you have to do that so yeah, I, I think that'd be the way I'd be running it. You know, a lot of there's obviously a lot of posters and things around campus this week. Probably the most noticeable is the banner that you've erected in the hub. How much did that cost? Uh, Fifty euro. Fifty. How did you get such a deal on that? That's a, a very mine, cheap. Uh, John D O'Neill. There's a little plug from there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a graphic designer and he does this uh, for a living. So he uh, pretty much just said he was gonna he was gonna do it for me for free. But I know that that's not in the spirit of the campaign. So it's not in the rules. I, 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 I said yeah. It's, so it's not the rules to do for free. But also it's not it's not in the spirit either. Yeah. Like if, I go, if you get me in contact with Johnny, will he give me a banner for fifty euro? Probably not. No. No. So but that's a problem. How do you feel yeah. about Kim that he's getting a, an advantage because of the contacts he has? Um, I think life's all about contacts, really. To be honest, um, that's how you get anything really around like you know you can use your context and I if I had someone I'd, lo I'd love them to help me that way as well is the presidency yeah. the same it's all a bit pretty much a popularity race no I don't think that either like you could be popular uh, but you could be popular for like the wrong reasons you know what I mean like so such as and um, you could be just part of a society that and you're the chair of it and you're known through that um whereas I think that you need to be a nice person and approachable as well as um just being popular you know th like things like that um, I would consider myself like quite popular all across DCU, but that's for different reasons because I've got involved between my faculty and different societies and stuff like that. You know, so that's how I feel about it. Right. Okay. Um, Sean Castro, I'll come back to a point that you brought up yep. at CRC last week, and that was with regard to the wages for the yep. sabbatical positions. You think that uh, sabbatical should be paid more? Uh, I think the education officer and welfare officer should be, uh, and it's quite simple. Uh, next year, you're going to have a situation where was that mentioned though? We didn't. Uh, actually, it was. Uh, I made it particularly clear three times. Uh, I didn't. I myself. again, uh, sorry you didn't hear, but I did say three yeah. times. Uh, just to clarify, yeah, no, I want them increased because. And just to clarify as well, you want the education and welfare, but not present, not the role no, you're not present. For Again, it would be untoward if I was to get ask for an increase while running. It would be absolutely untoward. And I made this clear to all sabbaticals when I talked to them a, a month or two beforehand about this. The reason why I want to discuss this is because the reality is, is that your education officer and your welfare officer are the only people in the union who have a peer to peer role. They have to sit down with the students, and next year you're going to have a situation where you have to represent the students on St. Pat's who are in St. Pat's uh, Drum Condra although they are DCU students, so you're going to have to get under. So they're only allowed to work, 40 hour, uh, work paid 40 hours a week. How are they going to be able to do that? Someone, if someone well, they're also going to have more sabbatical positions. No, that's that in two years' time. That's in two years' time. Which that's so so would so the wage do you come down then in two years? Do you not feel that the president sits down and has, has a one-to-one? -on -one he doesn't. But no, I, I'm sorry, but like if you look at the constitution where these roles are outlined, not you know so, something out of the air, no, where the roles are outlined, education, peer-to-peer, -peer, welfare, peer-to-peer, -peer, President, chief no. representative, simple as. No, I, I don't agree with well, that. Well, why don't, don't you, why don't you agree with it? Why don't you, 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 you speak, please? Why, why don't you agree with it? Um, because I think that the president, obviously, when, for example, a chair on a, a society, they obviously chair the meetings, do all that. But that doesn't mean that, like, sometimes the chair can get away with not doing anything. Whereas I think the president needs to be working equally as hard, and if not harder. So I don't know why you'd increase the wages of the welfare and the education officer and not increase the present. Mm. I, I'm very happy to go with the wage that it has at the moment, but I don't know why he would because he he would be like technically the president would be sitting on a lot more committees, working equal equally if not more har like harder. So uh, what I do you think, think, Terry? I think uh, as is, I think that it's a pretty uh, 
it's pretty good rate for it's pretty much in line with a lot of unions and uh, I think that it's all three positions are pretty much shared and equal responsibility I don't think that it should be separate that a certain one could get more than the other I think it could also be seen as a sort of a a, a way of kind of getting votes to kind of make a matter out of yourself a week before, two weeks before election starts. So you think that's what Sean's doing here? Well, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying right that's on. what it kind of a I look. Can you explain that concept to me? Well, just if you're if you're saying you don't want the presidency to get more because you're running for it and yeah. you're looking for the other because ones because it would be untoward. And again, the motivation for having this discussion is because you know we should have discussions that are difficult. First mm. of all, but second of all, your education officer and your welfare officer are going to have a difficult burden for the next year. Now, do you want them to be paid adequately or not? Like, they are paid under their contract 40 hours a week. They cannot work more, but they do work more. So they're going to have to go down and say, so the president. No, he doesn't. Well, because, again, right. there, there's this thing where the, the president is a political representative, and you have the rest of the executive. You can uh, delegate responsibility. That's one of the biggest problems but in this year. The that, that, I'm sorry. Just, just, uh, you, I didn't interrupt yeah. you now. You, please don't interrupt me. Um, yeah, the president has a uh, share of the executive. He can delegate responsibility. The largest problem in this union is that the power is top heavy. I remember when I sat as chair of, uh, chair of council, they wouldn't even allow us uh, email access to the website to the uni union website because they felt that it was their their website not the union's Who website this was the president at the time and it's this culture of power has to be vested in just one or two or three people we have executive that's 10 11 people we have two to three hundred class reps why don't we defer why don't we uh, delegate responsibility out empower students well that's something that's going to be done in two years time with the increased sabbaticals like i mean would you would you, do you think that the, it would be fair to increase the wage for next year and then take it back down when there are those more sabbaticals yeah, i have no workers? problem with that i have absolutely no problem with that and also it's not just it wasn't just wages sabbatical pay so in a number of years you have your, your you're normally in around paid the same same level but again if you look at Trinity they get for their Trinity's battle they, they get free accommodation so again it, it's uh, about having a Trinity are a bit of a law on their own a lot of the no time no there isn't there's a number of other colleges where they have side bands. so I think uh, UL has paid a, a euro above every year they have looked into accommodation for this I've staff. never heard this there is no documents online say student, the student union has looked into this that's another problem that the student union executive has these conversations between themselves and not with the student body but you want you want you say that you want to make it clear and have the conversation with the student body. But in your manifesto, you talk about union committees and you want to start two new committees: yeah. um, the events and uh, events and entertainment committee and a USI DCU relations committee. Is that not just going to clog things up more with more committees and more Again, bodies? This 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 is two parts. This is about delegating. Uh, with regards to the USI committee, you have your USI annual budget. So. Uh, your membership fees are paid individually. We also have a 30k budget that funds your officers going to national council and your students going to national congress mm -hmm. and things like pink training. So again, you need coordinate. I don't know how much you're spending, where they're spending. If you look at USI officer board, every officer every officer has to give an, uh, an expenses account to national council. They're the equivalent of their class rep council. So do you know where the money's going? I don't know where the money's going. I'd like to know where it's going. That's the first thing. The second thing about the events form, I look around events. Like there's this concept that you know, like the union is about events. I'm sorry, we we employ an events coordinator for a reason. He's quite good at his job. The only thing the president, sabbatical, and executive do is they inform inv events, they shape events. They don't ring up, uh, let's say, the dark and say, can you come out? That's what the events coordinator does. You inform and shape events, and that's about it. So from my point of view, you know, I look around and I see, let, let's look at the likes of, uh, we're, we had in the, the, the hub there today, a and uh, had a had a, a ball, in, and the queue was out the door. Like, why can't we get them coming in uh, on site and ask them, how do you do this? Let, let's learn from them. Let's get societies involved in a very real way. I had a, I put my science ball tickets on sale and I sold I sold them all out in forty five minutes. That's why like why that's the, why I'm is it, is, this, is, this is the spring break ball sold you? Are no. all the tickets sold? No. But like the student union puts on these balls. That's what like I want to reform the balls next year. Like that's one of my things as well. But, but like that's what I have there, where you bring in people from outside who have competencies in these issues. And how will they be paid? They w again, it depends. Like you, you it's like I think. So, but that's putting more money into something else that could be going towards the well, events and paying these better. Right? It well, it is if you if you no, want no, to no, do I'm sorry, job. No, I'm sorry, it's not putting money into it. You're getting people in societies asking them to come, come on board and help the union. And why would they do? People in society are massively busy. Any any big society is, especially in the second semester, absolutely swamped. So why are they going to give their time towards something like that? It's like with the media crew. What incentive but is like, there? I'm sorry. How many, how many class reps are involved? In, uh, how many class reps? There are a number of class reps who all who all hold positions in societies as well. It's this. This is something to find out. See where societies are if they want union i always hear you you want better events you have to actually put some skin in the game if you want better events well, you can't just snipe from the from the sidelines for the summer ball kind of organized a group of people to get together and to ask them questions on it he all is, the is this was a terry can i get you in here what's, yeah, what's your view because you've been well, heavily involved in club life yeah i was sat on focus groups recently looking into what students want uh, for balls and stuff like that there's big events created by anf and stuff like that 
that's fine they've got a huge base they've got a huge following and people who sign up to them will go to these things because this is pretty much their biggest event of the year and that's what they do um in terms of i think just setting up events it's good that the spring break is on you know if people choose not to go that's their own fault it, i think it's going to be a really good event um getting in acts like the darkness and stuff like that i think shane mcneil is doing a great job getting them in and SU promoting it, all they can do is promote it. They can promote it through their Facebook page and everything else. But and I is there need for more, pe more people involved from outside, like a committee? Or a well, I, I think it would be good if you could get societies involved, if you could get clubs involved in these things. Myself, I run, I've run, ran big events, uh, uh, boxing events, and I've tried my best to get clubs and societies involved as much as possible. Um, you can only ask them so much. It's, it's unpaid, it's voluntary, and it's only people who want to do things for themselves. Like So you can ask them, but I think you need... Uh, the likes of an events coordinator like Shay that can bring in these big acts and get them in. If people choose not to go, that isn't, you know, he has to try and his best and the SU have to try and promote it. Like, mm -hmm. and I think that that's definitely something that's uh, Unfortunately, we're running out of time in, in the debate tonight. So I finally just want to go through uh, the panel and um, in, in one sentence, what the biggest issue uh, for you is if you were elected president and why people um, should vote for you based on that. So can we might start what with you? What do you mean you? the biggest issue? Uh, what's your biggest, the, like, what do you think the biggest issue for the president of DC will be next year? Um, well, I think the merger with Matter Day and St. Pat's is a big thing, and then the Hope Development Plan. So I really want to work on them too. Okay, Sean? Uh, I think it's three issues. It's the merger, it's uh, the Hope being knocked and rebuilt, and it's the general election. If you want to make any change, that's where it is. And, uh, and Terry? Yeah, well, I just agree with exactly what they said. The Hope Development, which I've been on the committee, and the, the merger is obviously the two biggest issues I think that the President's going to have to face, yeah. Two. That's about all we've got time for in the President's Debate tonight. Thank you to Sean Cassidy, Kim Sweeney and Terry Keegan for joining us in studio. There is, of course, a fourth person running for SU President this year. That's Timmy Crow. He couldn't make it tonight because he's representing Ireland in athletics in Prague this week. But if you want to check out his manifesto and find out what he stands for, you can do so on Facebook at Timmy for Prez or on his website at 101student.com. That's all we've got time for in the DCU TV Students' Union elections for this year. Thanks a million to the production team, to my co-presenter, Owen Sheehan and to you for tuning in. Thank you.